Good morning. Welcome to St. Anne's. We're pleased that you have chosen to worship with us. In imitation of the Lord Jesus, we value and respect your life with all its personal backgrounds and richness, in its physical and family uniqueness, and in all its beautiful variety. May you find a home in our faith community. Today we celebrate the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our Mass intention is for Peggy Lucky. Our celebrant is Father Joe. For everyone's safety, remember to follow the directions of your usher. At this time, please double check that your cell phone is turned off. And please stand and greet those nearby with an eye smile as we begin our celebration. And so we begin with the sign of our salvation in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Good morning. We welcome you as we gather as God's people this day. We are the church, the body of Christ, called to build the kingdom of God. Each of us is part of this institution that can be traced back to St. Peter, the rock on whom we are built. As we celebrate the Eucharist here today, let us reflect on this awesome privilege of being a part of this 2,000-year-old mission and contemplate 
what we are called to do to bring it closer to perfection. Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to live in the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the everlasting sign of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. O oh God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our heart may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of ever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robes, give him your sash, and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor 
for his family. The word of the Lord. is eternal don't forsake the work of your hands Lord your love is eternal don't forsake the work of your hands Lord your love is eternal don't forsake the work of your hands Lord your love is eternal don't forsake the work of your hands A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for, th and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Uh, this week I, I had the opportunity to get to know someone uh, whom I never met and I still haven't met. It was uh, a little story that was written in the uh, newspaper this week. Alec. She's 103 years old. And uh, the story is that uh, she just uh, survived a bout with uh, COVID-19. And uh, she, of course, she was elated, she was happy, and she wanted to rejoice. And she decided that she was gonna rejoice by getting a tattoo. <laughs> so she went to the tattoo parlor and she had a tattoo of a frog placed on her, her wrist. And the reason she chose the frog was because she always had a liking for frogs. Uh, you know, when she was at her own home, she had the little tea kettle, the little cups, or had saucers and cups, and, and the little knickknacks, and even in the garden in her yard, she had a frog, you know, so she was always attached to the frog. So. She was really excited. So she went to the tattoo parlor. She had the uh, tattoo done, and she said, you know, it wasn't that bad. It didn't hurt that much, you know. And uh, then she started talking, and she says, uh, you know, the other thing I like to do is to have a ride on a motorcycle. So the tattooist, if that's the right word, uh, said, well, my father has a Harley Davidson, called his father. He took her for a ride around the parking lot, the Harley Davidson. <laughs> so she was really thrilled, and uh, then they took her home, and uh, he was starting to think, he said, I wonder what she's going to say now, and she, she says, there's just one other thing I'd like to do, skydive. Talk about being bold, huh? <laughs> Talk about being adventurous. Talk about wanting to experience things in life that uh, seem so exciting and uh, uh, noteworthy. Uh, that idea of being bold. I, I, I think in today's gospel, uh, Jesus, first of all, he takes a poll. You know, as, as we're in a, the election season, there's a lot of polls going on. And uh, Jesus himself takes a poll. And he asks his disciples, who do people say I am? 
John the Baptist, Elijah, one of the prophets. But Jesus says, who do you say that I am? And Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Son of God. Talk about a bold statement, huh? Talk about a moment of utter grace that Peter would blurt out these words. You are the Christ. In other words, you are the anointed one. The anointed one in the Hebrew tradition is the king, David. You are the one. And then Jesus says something to him that invites Peter to be bolder than he ever thought. You are Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. Talk about a bold statement. Talk about a bold challenge. And to see the process that Peter goes through to become the rock, the rock of our church. Be bold. It's quite exciting, you know? Yeah, uh, one of the um, World Youth Days uh, I, I don't remember if it was in, in Rio uh, or in Poland, uh, when Pope Francis was talking to the youth, he made a statement simply saying, be bold. In other words, take to yourself what you have, the gift of what you have, and it's the gift of your faith, and be bold with it. And being bold with our faith means to change the world. He was inviting the youth to change the world. How is he going to be bold? Well, I think it goes back to what was asked of Peter. Because we are all part of the church. And that challenge is thrown out not only to Peter, not only to the youth, but to us. Be ambassadors of reconciliation. Isn't that what God is all about? He's the reconciler. Even as missionaries of La Salette, we know Mary as Our Lady of La Salette, reconciler of sinners. To be bold, to be ambassadors of reconciliation, to be ambassadors of peace. Wow. That's what we're all challenged with, my sisters and brothers. Reconciliation and peace. Compassion, humility. Boy, that sounds like God. That's who our God is. He is the person of compassion. He's the person of humility, the cross. He's the person who brings peace in such a world that we live in that is so filled with anger and wars and factions and everything. And he's asking us to be bold, to be reconciled. wonder why 
uh, Paul used those words today about the awesomeness of the depth and the height of God. Who can compare with him? No one can compare with him, but he's inviting us to be like him. Be bold. Have a tattoo. Go for a bike ride. Go skydive. Profess your faith. God bless. Please stand and let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. In thou from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers, as disciples of the Lord, we are summoned to identify him as our Redeemer, as Christ, the Son of the living God. We hold firm to our baptismal commitment as we address our Heavenly Father with er our earthly needs. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, successor to St. Peter, that the Holy Spirit will guide him in proclaiming the good news, promoting unity in the church, and inspiring us to greater love and service. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who exercise authority, whether in religion, business, education, or government, that they may recognize God as the source of all authority and use their power for promoting justice and the common good. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For parish ministries, especially the Knights of Columbus on their Founders Day weekend, that they may recognize the great generosity of God who invites them out of love to share in the life of the Trinity. We pray. Lord, pray. For all gathered here, as baptized Christians, may we exercise the ministry of priest, prophet, and king in serving the church and others. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are searching for the keys to new life, 
that God will help those who feel bound by addiction or destructive habits to recognize Christ as the key that will liberate them. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God will deliver the human race from the coronavirus, heal those who are all ill, and inspire those who are developing cures and treatments. We also pray for those sick in our parish. George Bolduck, Linda Carson, Maymay Dunn, John Gerke, Mary Hayko, Bernice Konizika, Linda Meyer, Wesley Moss, Moti Shavit, Lori Stewart, David Sweet, Amy Valley, and Bernie Virgilio. We pray. Lord, hear us. <clears throat> May those that have died in the peace of Christ know the joys of heaven. We pray especially for Marion McGinnis, mother of Mary, Lynn, and Jean McGinnis. Carolyn Schmidt, wife of William Schmidt. Daryl Stewart, husband of Lori, son-in-law of Elaine Garrett. We pray. Lord, For our mass intention this morning, Peggy Lucky. We pray. Lord, Ever faithful and merciful God, the rock of the church, St. Peter professed Jesus as Christ, the son of the living God. May we, his living body, share in this faith with a courageous heart and be a source of healing and hope for all our world. And we ask this through Christ our Lord.
and pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered or far by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gather them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you with thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and your glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Gregory John, our Bishop, Bernard and Joel, his auxiliaries, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, God. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. With your Let us give a sign of peace to those in our community.
my sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, I shall. Please follow the usher's directions. We will be distributing communion by pew sections. Also be sure to use the hand sanitizer before you go and to keep your mask on. There is no rush, so you can be sure your hands are dry before you approach. For those watching online, we invite you to pray the prayer for spiritual communion. Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
we have been graced with no announcements this morning, so please stand for our closing prayer. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us this day with this peace, love, and joy, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace and love to serve our God and our neighbor. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. Ushers will dismiss everyone during from the back rows, and the sides will go out the side doors, and the middle will go out these front doors. <laughs> <laughs>